Listening test. Part one. You are going to listen to a recorded material. Before you listen, you have twenty seconds to read instructions carefully, and you will listen to it twice. You are ready to start. You will hear a woman telephoning a tourist office to ask about free activities. Good morning. This is Burnham Tourist Office. Martin speaking. Oh, hello. I saw a poster about free things to do in the area, and it said people should phone you for information. I'm coming to Burnham with my husband and two children for a few days on June the twenty seventh, or possibly the twenty eighth, and I'd like some ideas for things to do on the twenty ninth. Yes, of course. Okay, then let's start with a couple of events, especially for children. The art gallery is holding an event called Family Welcome that day, when there are activities and trails to use throughout the gallery. That sounds interesting. What time does it start? The gallery opens at ten, and the family welcome event runs from ten thirty until two o'clock. The gallery stays open until five, and several times during the day they're going to show a short film that the gallery has produced. It demonstrates how ceramics are made, and there'll be equipment and materials for children to have a go themselves. Last time they ran the event, there was a film about painting, which went down very well with the children, and they're now working on one about sculpture. I like the sound of that. And what other events happen in Burnham? Well, do you all enjoy listening to music? Oh yes. Well, there are several free concerts taking place at different times: one or two in the morning, the majority at lunchtime, and a couple in the evening. And they range from pop music to Latin American. The Latin American could be fun. What time is that? It's being repeated several times in different places. They're performing in the Central Library at one o'clock. Then at four, it's in the City Museum. And in the evening at seven thirty, there's a longer concert in the theatre. Right. I'll suggest that to the rest of the family. Something else you might be interested in is the boat race along the river. Oh yes, do tell me about that. The race starts at Offord Marina to the north of Burnham and goes as far as Summer Pool. The best place to watch it from is Charlesworth Bridge, though that does get rather crowded. And who's taking part? Well, local boat clubs, but the standard is very high. One of them came first in the West of England Regional Championship in May this year. It was the first time a team from Burnham has won. It means that next year they'll be representing the region in the national championship. Now I've heard something about Paxton Nature Reserve. It's a good place for spotting unusual birds, isn't it? That's right. Throughout the year, there is a lake there as well as a river, and they provide a very attractive habitat. So it's a good idea to bring binoculars if you have them, and just at the moment you can see various flowers that are pretty unusual. The soil at Paxton isn't very common. They're looking good right now. Right, my husband will be particularly interested in that. And there's going to be a talk and slideshow about mushrooms, and you'll be able to go out and pick some afterwards and study the different varieties. Uh huh. And is it possible for children to swim in the river? Yes. Part of it has been fenced off to make it safe for children to swim in. It's very shallow, and there's a lifeguard on duty whenever it's open. The lake is too deep, so swimming isn't allowed there. Okay, we must remember to bring their swimming things in case we go to Paxton. How long does it take to get there by car from Burnham?、Mm, about twenty minutes, but parking is very limited, so it's usually much easier to go by bus, and it takes about the same time. Right. Well, I'll discuss the options with the rest of the family. Thanks very much for all your help. You're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Now look at part two. We're doing this task. You have twenty seconds to look through all the questions. The recording will be played twice.
Hello and welcome to this Learn English Professionals recording, brought to you by the British Council. Allergies. Dr. Peterson, you've just published an article about allergies and the fact that they're on the rise. Yes, that's right. So, first of all, what kind of allergies are we talking about? Hay fever, asthma? All allergies, really. An allergy is a physical reaction to a substance.、Hmm. That reaction can be sneezing, an itching, sore eyes, feeling sick, a rash of some kind like eczema, or breathing difficulties like asthma. And are allergies on the rise? Oh yes, absolutely. There's no doubt about that.、Hmm. When I was at school, there was only one boy in the class who had an inhaler. Now, thirty years later, more than half the kids in my daughter's class have them. So why the great increase? Is it our fault? Sometimes, yes, either directly or indirectly. Our lifestyles have changed a lot, starting from birth.、Mm. It's a well-known fact that bottle-fed babies are more likely to develop allergies than breast-fed babies. Yet fewer mothers breastfeed because they simply don't have the time, or because of practicalities like wanting to share the feeding with a partner.、Mm. Then, when our children are toddlers, we smother everything in disinfectant and destroy all traces of germs. But surely that's a good thing. No, it's not. Germs are good.、Oh. Too much cleanliness is bad. Think back to when we were children. We used to make mud pies, splash about in dirty puddles, put all sorts of things into our mouths. <laughs> so, are you saying we aren't allowing our children's immune systems to develop? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying.、Mm. Our obsessions with cleanliness have gone too far. We need to expose our children to germs so that their defence mechanisms have a chance to develop and get stronger.、Mm. If they aren't exposed, there's a danger that they'll develop allergies and food intolerances later on. What about genes? Aren't some allergies genetic? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> The jury is still out on that one. Allergy problems do run in the family, but we don't understand why. Scientists have identified cases in families where there's been some kind of genetic mutation which affects the immune system in some way.、Hmm. This might result in members of a family being more prone to allergies, but not necessarily the same allergies. So, dad might be allergic to milk products, while one child gets hay fever, and another develops an allergy to some sort of skin cream.、Hmm. And this doesn't explain why there have been such an increase in allergies over the past ten years or so. No, it doesn't. So, what has changed? Lifestyles, in a nutshell. Mobile phone use, all technology really. Stress levels are considerably higher than they used to be. <laughs> We're exposed to more chemicals and toxic substances: diesel fumes, pesticides. One type of allergy that has risen considerably. Is food intolerance.、Oh. In some places, an allergy to soya is very common. This is probably because soya is present in so many food products these days, and our bodies haven't had time to adjust to this change. We don't eat in the same way as we used to. Seasonal food is a thing of the past. Now everything is available all year round. So, to sum up, why are allergies on the rise? Well, if we're summing up. I'll keep it brief. <laughs> too much bottle feeding, an obsession with cleanliness, too few germs, and too many convenience foods. Too little fresh fruit and veg, and an abuse of out-of-season food all year round. Too many vaccinations, and altogether far too much stress. Dr. Peterson, thank you very much for coming to the studio today. If viewers would like to read Dr. Peterson's report, they can write in to his. Now look at part three. For doing this task, you have twenty seconds to look through all the questions. The recording will be played twice.
You will hear a man telephoning a friend to find out about their local public library. Hello? Hi, Susie. It's Paul here. How are you? Enjoying your new job? You're working at the library, aren't you? Yes. I started when the library reopened a month ago. It's great. Actually, Carol and I have been meaning to join for a while. Oh, you should. It doesn't cost anything, and the new library has all sorts of facilities. It's not just a place where you borrow books. For instance, there's an area with comfortable seats where you can sit and read the magazines they have there. Some people spend the whole morning there. Mm. Wish I had that amount of time to spend. <laughs> yes, you must be pretty busy at present, with the children and everything. We are, yes. But we're hoping to get away this summer. We're thinking of going to Greece. Well, we've got a much larger section of the library devoted to travel books now, so you should come and have a look. I can't remember if there's anything specifically on Greece, but I should think so. OK. Now, Carol's organising a project for the history class she teaches at school. It's about life in the town a hundred years ago. Do you have anything that might be useful? Yes. Actually, we've now got a new section with materials on the history of the town and surrounding region. Right. I'll tell her. You can't always find that sort of thing on the internet. Now, in the old library, there used to be a separate room with reference books. It was a really nice, quiet room. Yes, we've put those books in the main part of the library now. But we do have a room called the community room. It can be hired out for meetings, but at other times, people can use it to study. I might use that. It's hard to find anywhere quiet at home sometimes. I can't remember how old your son and daughter are. We've introduced a special section of fiction written specially for teenagers, but they might be a bit young for that. Yes, they would be. Well, we do have lots of activities for younger children. Yes. For example, we have a science club. At the next meeting, they're going to be doing experiments with stuff that everyone has in the kitchen sugar and flour and so on. They might be interested, yes. And we have a competition for children called Reading Challenge. That doesn't begin until after the end of term. They have to read six books and they get a certificate if they manage it. So that gives them something to do while they're on holiday, instead of getting bored. That's the idea. And there's special activities for adults too. On Friday, we have a local author called Tanya Streep, who's going to be talking about her new novel. It's called Catch the Mouse, and she based the story on a crime that actually took place here years ago. Right. We're not free on Friday, but I'll look out for the book. Now, this probably isn't for you, but we do have IT support available for members. We get quite a few older people coming along who are wanting to get up to speed with computer technology. It's on Tuesday mornings. They don't need to make an appointment or anything. They just turn up. Well, my mother might be interested. I'll let her know. OK. And there's another service which you wouldn't expect from a library, which is a free medical checkup. The hospital arranges for someone to come along and measure the level of sugar in your blood, and they check cholesterol levels at the same time. Really? Yes, but that's only for the over-60s, so you wouldn't qualify. OK. Well, I'll tell my mother. She might be interested. What other information? Well, we do have a little shop with things like wall charts and greetings cards, and also stamps, so you can post the cards straight away, which is really useful. Yeah. Well, I'll bring the children round at the weekend and we'll join. Oh, one more thing. I'll be bringing the car. Is there parking available? Yes, and it's free in the evening and at weekends. Perfect. Well, thanks, Susie. See you soon.
That's the end of the listening section.